Welcome back to Matt Tech TV. In this edition, we're going to look at the basic features and uh, procedures to use with Google Drive's presentation tool. This is a lot like Microsoft Office's PowerPoint tool, lets you make multimedia slideshows. To begin, of course, you're going to go to your dashboard, you're going to click the red Create button as usual, and this time you're going to select Presentation. The first thing that it's going to do once you get in here is it's going to ask you to choose a theme. Now this is optional. You don't have to choose it now. You can choose it later. If you want to just go with a blank presentation, leave it on simple light or simple dark. But if you want a theme, there are quite a few themes you can choose. I'll just pick this one. And you can also choose the width of it. If you want to go with more of the traditional PowerPoint width, you can. The default is to do widescreen. That's because a lot of monitors these days, projectors, etc., are set for widescreen. Click OK. And now we've got a presentation started. OK, aside from selecting the theme that you're going to use, and like I said, you can change that from within the presentation tool. If you'll notice right here is the theme button. And if you click that, you will get the same menu that we started out with, so you can select whichever theme you like. You can also change the layout of a slide. You know, the, this is the typical title slide where you could put, you know, whatever. And uh, to add text, you'll notice you just click in the box, uh, text box, and start typing. Um, there are default. Uh, fonts incidentally that are associated with whatever theme you've chosen. But you can also change to different layouts. There's title and body, title and two columns, and so on. There's six different layouts for you to choose from. All right, within these layouts, uh, it should also be mentioned, you can rearrange things. I can click on, uh, for example, this particular uh, text box and move it around so if I'd like my text my title to be a little taller a little higher or a little wider or whatever I need I can arrange it as such so don't feel like just because it only has six uh, slide layouts that you're uh, tied down to those six different choices also just like the word processing uh, tool the document tool that Google Drive has you can change fonts by simply selecting them come up here choose your font list don't forget, if you want to add more fonts, to use that More Font tool. There's quite a few more choices in there. A lot of them that are a little more interesting than what you typically find in here. Um, but when I have one I like, I simply click it like that. So on. If I want to change size of the font, I can do so as well. I can change it to bold, italicized, underlined. Uh, I can also change the text color to whatever I'd like. There's a text color tool, and so on. So so all of those are just like you would see pretty much in the document tool or the spreadsheet tool. If I next need to add another slide, I can do that real easily. I can go here to slide, new slide, and now I've got another slide. Notice the default for this one happened to be title and text block. Again, if I wanted to change that, I'd just go here to layout. It should also be noted that as you're going through this, if you decide you just would rather go with a colored background instead of a theme, there is a background choice here that does let you choose background colors as such. And you can also even browse for an image. So if you have an image on your computer you want to be the background, you can use that as well. Next, I want to show you how you can add images and shapes into a slide. So first of all, I'm going to go and I'm going to actually create a new slide. And I'm going to choose a different layout for this one. Just because I'm going to just, I want total freedom to stick things wherever I want it. I'm going to then stick an image. If I want to find an image, I simply come right here to the image tool, or I can go to insert and then go down to image uh, here. But in this case, I'm just going to use this little shortcut here. Again, very much like in the document tool, I'm going to have different options for how I actually insert the image. I can upload the image, I can take a snapshot of myself, or I can do it by URL, which if you recall from that lesson involves embedding an image that's on another site. In this case, I'm just going to browse to it, go to the folder where I've got the image, whatever image I need, click on the image, click open or double click on the image, it'll upload the image into my document where I can resize it, I can rotate it, 
like so, and of course I can click and drag and move it around however I need. There's also a shape drawing tool, you'll notice right here, that allows you to insert different kinds of shapes. The shapes then you can come change features like the fill color right here, the paint bucket is your fill color. You can change the line color, that's the outline of it. You can change the outline thickness, so you can modify it to your liking. You can also change the outline style if you choose and so on. Just like with this image, I can drag this around, I can rotate it, like so. I can also change the order of images by doing a right click in Windows or a control click on a Mac. Go to order and I can say send, uh, you know, bring forward, bring backwards and so on. If I want to send this one to the back, now the arrow is in front. Or if I wanted to bring it to the front, now it's in front of the arrow. There's also a nice little handy undo button there, which is always good. Okay, so that's the basic for images and drawings. There's also a line tool that you should be aware of. And the scribble tool is basically free drawing. The line, of course, is straight lines, arrows, curves. You get the idea. But if I need to do free, free drawing, I can do so with the scribble tool. Notice that the drawing then becomes uh, an object that I can move around, I can resize, I can rotate, etc. So you do have some nice uh, tools that allow you to add some creative graphics and uh, make your presentations a lot more vivid and a lot more attractive. Okay, the last thing that we're going to talk about is, um, is how to do transitions. Transitions are popular. People like uh, for slides to have, you know, attractive ways that they change from one another. They also like to have different components within a slide make their appearance in a dramatic or attractive way. So let me show you how that's going to be done. If you're just talking about a slide that you want to set a transition for, the first thing is you do is make sure that you don't have any of the objects or text selected in the slide. Then you click the transition button here. This menu comes up over here on the right. You'll notice that at the top it says slide no transition. I can change that really easily by clicking this drop down menu. Now that you notice there's only uh, five, six choices, excuse me, uh, none of which are particularly dramatic. I, I like cube. Um, it's, it's a little 3D kind of effect. So I'm going to select cube. If I want to see what that looks like, I can click play. And we'll see what the cube effect looks like here. That was pretty fast. I probably need to slow that down. So I can drag this little bar here. I'm going to say stop first. Now I can drag this little bar over. Now when I click play, maybe it'll look a little more dramatic, maybe a little bit uh, easier to see if it's not too slow. That may be too slow. We have to, we'll have to adjust it to find just the right speed. Okay, so I click stop and now I've done uh, my transition for that. If I want all of my slides to use the same transition, all I have to do is click apply to all slides. Every one of the slides now has that transition from one to next. If I don't want them all to use, if I want different ones, I need to go in to each slide and add its transition. Um, now if I want to actually add an animation for an object like this title here, what I need to do is click on the title. While I've got this animation uh, screen showing just like I had just then on, by clicking transitions, and then I click add animation. And again, I don't have a lot of choices, but here's a few. So maybe I want it to zoom in, and I want it to do so pretty fast. And I want it to do it, um, I can either select on click, after previous, or with previous. So I'm going to say uh, on click for, this, for the purposes of this, and I'm going to click play. And you'll be able to see all of the animation applied to this slide. There's my rotate in, and if I click here, now I see the zoom in effect because I selected on click. Okay. If I want to add it, I need to click stop. If I want to add an animation to another um, object, I click on that object. Again, add animation. Maybe I want this one to be fade in on click. Or maybe I want this one to be fade in after previous. Again, if I click play, I can preview it. Click to animate in the first one, and then the second one fades in. 
All right, so we've made our show, we've added a few animations, a few graphics, and we want to actually see the show. To do that, you come up here and you click on View and select Present. All right, your presentation will come up. You may get a message asking you to allow Google Drive to be in full screen. All right. So this is my first slide, and if you remember, I had to click on it to make the first animation come in, and then the second one started, and so on. And then I can click to advance. I can also use the space bar on my keyboard, and it will advance to the next slide, and so on. Another way I can navigate is I can use the drop-down menu here to jump from slide to slide to slide. When I'm finished, click Exit and we're back in edit mode. Well that's it for this lesson. The next lesson we'll look at some of the amazing features of the Google uh, Drive Forms tool. And I think you'll really like that.